Hi everybody and welcome back to Rebecca Reads. This week we're going to read a book called Margaret and the Moon, How Margaret Hamilton Saved the First Lunar Landing. It was written by Dean Robbins and illustrated by Lucy Nisley. And what's really exciting about this book is that this is another book that was based on a true story. So when we read about the character of Margaret, Margaret Hamilton actually existed in real life. All right, here we go. Margaret Hamilton loved to solve problems. She came up with ideas no one had ever thought of before. Why were there only daddy long legs? Margaret had a solution. She would call some of them mommy long legs too. Why didn't girls play baseball? Margaret had a solution. She would join the team herself. Why didn't more girls grow up to be doctors? or scientists, or anything else they wanted. Margaret had a solution. She would study hard in every subject at school. Reading, music, art, and especially mathematics. She learned as much as she could about addition and subtraction, multiplication, and division. Margaret's father was a poet and philosopher who talked to her about the universe. She asked how the planets moved, when the galaxies formed, why the stars shone. She gazed at the night sky in wonder. And look, you can see all of the different constellations up in the sky. There are a whole bunch of them. There's Pegasus, Altar, Sagittarius, Orion. How many miles to the moon? 238,855. How many miles does it travel around the earth? 1,423,000. How fast does it go? 2,288 miles per hour. How big around is it? 6,783 miles. Margaret began solving harder and harder math problems. It was fun working her way through the steps. She liked moving around X's and Y's in algebra. She liked measuring circles and triangles in geometry. She liked studying curves in calculus. And then she discovered computers. Margaret could use this new invention to answer so many questions about the universe. She experimented with writing instructions or code that told the machine what to do. The code was called software and Margaret called herself a software engineer. She started with something simple, asking the computer to add and subtract, multiply and divide. Margaret taught herself to write code that performed more and more complicated tasks. She programmed computers to track airplanes through the clouds. That's pretty cool, huh? And even to predict the weather. She made them do things they had never done before. And look, you're probably watching this video either on a phone or a computer right now. Look what computers used to look like years and years ago. In 1964, Margaret got interested in an exciting project for NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Their scientists were working on the hardest problem humans ever tried to solve, flying people to the moon. Could Margaret use computers to get the astronauts 238,855 miles there and 238,855 miles back? She convinced NASA's leaders to let her try. Margaret thought of everything that could happen on a trip to the moon. Would the spacecraft go off course? Would it lose its power? Would an astronaut make a mistake? Margaret wrote code to tell the computers how to solve these problems. She worked her way through the steps, just as she used to do in math class. 
And look, this is an example of the real life code that Margaret Hamilton helped to create. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense if we look at it because it's a language that only computers can speak, but it has a whole bunch of numbers on there, see? All right. Soon, Margaret became director of software programming for NASA's project Apollo, leading dozens of scientists. She helped Apollo 8 orbit the moon 10 times. She helped Apollo 9 connect two ships in space. She helped Apollo 10 get within nine miles of the moon's surface. And look, the astronauts are saying, hello there. With Apollo 11, NASA would finally try to put people on the moon. Had Margaret thought of everything that could go wrong with a lunar landing? She checked her code again to make sure. The astronauts were depending on her. And this says Margaret's code. Look at how many pieces of paper it took to write this code. My goodness. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lift off! Apollo 8 rose with a blast of smoke and fire. Margaret followed along from a control room and the whole world watched on television. For four days, the spacecraft drew nearer to the moon. The lunar module, named the Eagle, split off to make the landing. Yippee! But with minutes left to go, an astronaut entered a command and the master alarm buzzed. Flip! Whoops! The Eagle's computer started performing too many tasks. Overload! Overload! Yikes! The control room panicked. The moon landing was in danger. Everyone looked at Margaret. Had she prepared for this problem? Of course. Margaret's code made the computer ignore the extra tasks and focus on the landing. It brought the eagle closer to the moon's surface. Closer, closer, touchdown! The eagle has landed, announced astronaut Neil Armstrong. The control room cheered. Margaret was a hero. Later that night, the eagle's hatch opened. Margaret held her breath. Armstrong took the first step on the moon. The whole world celebrated in front of their televisions. Look, everyone saying hooray in all different languages all around the world. Margaret walked outside, smiling. Her code had helped the astronauts get to the moon, and she knew it would help them get home safely. As always, she gazed at the night sky in wonder. Look, Margaret's all the way on Earth down here, looking up at the moon so far away in the sky. But Neil Armstrong was on that moon. The end. Oh, what an amazing story. I think that my favorite part of this story is that when Margaret was growing up, she had a lot of people who told her only boys can do this job or only girls do this job. And she didn't listen to those people who had set these these different limits of what was okay and not okay to do. She listened instead to her heart and she did what she was passionate about. All right, thank you so much for joining me to read Margaret and the Moon, and let's sing our goodbye song. Thanks for stopping by to read a book. I'm so glad that you came to take a look. Reading can be fun, it helps us to explore. We use imagination and so much more. I had so much fun getting to learn with you. See you next time when we read something new. Bye, everybody. See you next time.